This is NBC6, South Florida Today. Well, by now most of the kids are back in school, and are you feeling it yet? And many moms are juggling their busy days. What they have to do on their own, we, I should say, and also being very concerned about the kids, getting them to soccer practice, getting them to school on time, making sure they eat right. It can sometimes be one of these revolving doors that has you stressed out. Today, Dr. Gabby Cora is here to talk about effective time management to prevent a parental burnout. Timely. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for the invitation. And this is really such a timely topic that affects both women and men in the workplace who are also trying to make sure that their kids succeed in life. Right. But it can be overwhelming, particularly if you have, you know, a few kids, they're going to different schools and you're just struggling to keep up. How do we prevent parental burnout? Well, the, the most important thing is to try to organize ourselves ahead of the game, to try to plan ahead. So this is the time, this is the time to make sure that the kids are involved in school and that they already have some activities already organized. But this is not the time to start signing them up to new activities that had not been planned. It's very important to make sure that the kid is not leaving school and then going through three, four or five activities after school. Right, because they need some downtime just like we do. Absolutely, and one of the toughest things is the kids need to do their homework, but they also need to spend some time with a family or even just sit down and veg sometimes. And right. I know parents are very concerned about their kids not doing anything, but sometimes it's important for parents to see that the kids are maybe very busy in school and with after school activities. One of the things that I um, always do with my son is as soon as he gets in the car when I pick him up, I simply ask him, do you want to just veg for a minute and let the air conditioning hit you or do you want to talk about your day? Because I love talking to him, but I understand that even when I come home from work, I need just alone time for a good 10 or 15 minutes. I, I give my husband the same privilege. I just don't go around him, let him veg out, let him, let him re sort of position their minds, and then everybody's happy. And that's very key. Those 10 to 15 minutes may help the person just switch from a very busy day into the other mode, into more of a resting mode. And sometimes that's what it takes, 10 to 15 minutes in which you can you know, shift gears from a very, very busy day into, well, what's next? So that you can go from that rush um, activity, rushed activity throughout the course of the day into a mode that may be more relaxed. What about the women out there who might be saying, listen, um, we're just struggling to make ends meet. I work two jobs, my husband works a night shift, and we really don't have a regular time during the day that we can get together to reconnect with our kids, but we, but we want to do that so much. Then if that's the case, we know, and science also shows, that uh, families that have dinner together do better in very many ways, not only in that interconnectedness, but kids do also better in school. Even if it is a half hour to an hour that the whole family can sit down and have dinner together, even if there are some arguments during that time, but that is a sacred time that allows everyone to uh, be together and just chat about their day and chat about life. Should you actually schedule time together if having dinner on a daily basis is impossible because of extracurricular activities? What about the weekends? Do you really need to um, make time for the whole family rather than just everybody running off and doing their own thing? If there is a chance that every single day the, the, the whole family has time to reunite and chat, that's going to be the most important thing. If you just do it over the weekends, you're going to see those fluctuations going up and down, up and down, instead of having that normal sense of unitedness. When, when parents come to you and family, I know you do, you're a psychiatrist and you do some family counseling, what's one of the common threads that is going through some of these families that are um, in crisis? You know, a lot of it is that multi-juggling of everything and p feel so pressured to do it all. What I see quite a bit is uh, people are starting to work more and more hours trying to make ends meet and sometimes they just burn out out of working so many hours and they stop being as effective in their everyday uh, life. And this happens with parents but it's also happening more with kids. You have young kids now teenagers who will come home and say mom I'm so stressed out and this this is a word that uh, children did not used to use 10 years ago 15 years ago 20 years ago you would just be very active but there was also a lot more time for physical exercise for example there are some schools that have really shut down the physical activities so these kids or are made it optional or made it optional instead mm -hmm. of making it just a part of that everyday life and whenever you have schools restricting that physical activity and or recreational activity with uh, breaks, 
then that makes it a lot harder for the kids to also have some time to relax and then move on into some other activities. It's very important that people take breaks and or physical activity that will um, uh, allow people to have even more stamina and more energy to continue with a busy day. Well, some words of wisdom. Thank you very much. I hope you got a lot out of it. I know I did. For more on Dr. Gabby, log on to our website. You know it. It's NBC6.net and click on As Seen on NBC6. Thank you so much. Thank you. Roxy, over to you.